Welcome back. I am in Lower Alabama again. Here I am. It's amazing as you go further south how much hotter it gets. I was in uh, Nashville area and got up in the morning and overnight it was cool. And I was in Missouri and I got up in the morning and overnight get up in the morning and it's, it's, it's cool. And then it, it starts to warm up during the day. Here, it's relatively cool. Like, it's blood temperature when you wake up in the morning and then it's sun temperature an hour or two later. So, this video I am filming in the evening as the sun has already gone down below the horizon and the cicadas are squealing with their amazing summer symphony and it is probably still about 92 degrees out. But I wanted to show you something. When your plants are dealing with the heat and with not enough rain, I want to show you something that really helps. And it's one thing to say that it really helps, but it's another thing to show you. So I want to show you after the fountain. So this is my food forest. It actually looks this good because I've been hauling a hose out here and spraying stuff with the hose. So there's, there's some life in here still. It's not completely and utterly dead. It's not great. But if we hadn't carried the hose around, if I hadn't been dragging the hose out here and watering it once or twice a week, uh, it would be much worse. We've got some good growth going here and these, these trees don't look too bad. Some of them have definitely suffered, especially the ones that have smaller root systems and have dried up. I've got some burned leaves on some things like these blackberries and some of my plants just, uh, they, oh no, they're not thriving. Like, take a look at this here. This is not super hot because it's been super hot. It's kind of wilty. There's that lack of luster in the leaves. You know, it's not great. If you come over here, you can see this taro, which likes lots of water, is torched. That's a uh, edible member of the elephant ear family, Colocasia escalenta, and it is not happy. The persimmon here is doing better, but it's still, you know, it could have more leaves. And those leaves could be happier and glossier. So let's come over here to this little island that we made. Look at, see, I still have remnants of the tape I ripped off to make this island. I didn't have the studio crew clean up first. But here's our island. This was sheet mulched. This is a little pocket of fertility. You guys saw me make this about a month ago before it got so miserable out. Get up in the morning time, making biscuits. Get up in the middle of the noonday biscuits. Get up in the afternoon, making biscuits. Get up in the middle of the nighttime biscuits. Get up in the morning time, making biscuits. Get up in the middle of the noonday biscuits. Get up in the afternoon, making biscuits. Get up in the middle of the Look at this incredible growth. Look at how glossy this baby is. That's a member of the ginger family right there. It's one of the turmerics. Really, really happy. Look at this gorgeous gummy berry right here. This thing has continued to put on growth. It's been touching 100 during the day. Look at the apple. This apple is putting on new growth right now. Like it's not super hot out. This is what it looked like from before when we put the island around it. It was getting chewed up, some leaves were dying back, it wasn't very happy. This is the new growth that is happening now because it got this extra love. So if we were to go down in here and take a look, it's dry on top, the dry grass we threw down, and then some compost material. As I get down in here, it's wet. It is wonderfully moist down here. There's also that layer of cardboard on top of the ground and beneath that we wet the ground really well and we put down some manure. So it's moist beneath the ground 
and it's cool for the roots to grow in and it's like dipping your feet in an ice cold creek on a hot day put your hands down and splash a little water on your back and suddenly it's it's 95 degrees out i can't take it i can't take it and then you go and you go whoo man i feel brand new so this is this is one of these things that when you see it you see what they they look like when they're thriving you really see a big difference it's not fighting with the grass for the water the roots are cool and happy the moisture levels are constant beneath the ground instead of drying out in the heat the heat is hitting the top of the plant it's taking that sunlight but it's got its roots down in the ground and it's cool and it's fed and it's happy you may not need mulch on the ground all the time but they've done studies showing the heat of the surface of the soil can soar up over 100, 120, 130 degrees right on the surface. But if you put mulch down, it could be 80 beneath the surface or 75. And the roots love that. What do you think happens when it gets up to 130 degrees? If you were to put your hand on a 130 degree surface, how would you feel? The roots go like this, uh-uh, I'm not doing that. And they stick down lower in the ground. All those top roots that would be grabbing the rain when it falls, they're burning off. The soil life is burning out of there. It is not happy. That bare soil, no good. Now, if you had grass there, it would fight with the grass for the nutrients. But if you have mulch there, it's the best of all possible worlds, as Pangloss would say. You've got cool, moist, wonderful root growing conditions and the condition of the trees and the plants show it. This is a tender plant. These are tender plants, like that taro that is burning so badly. But these guys look super, super happy. Just wanted to show you that. If you are uh, struggling with the heat and you're looking at your plants and they're looking sad and you can't seem to get enough water on them, go ahead and do a little sheet mulch island. Kill that grass out, cover that bare soil, Put some nice mulch on top of there. Water really well before you do it so the ground gets soaked. And then you can water when you want to water. But even if you don't water regularly, it takes a long time for the soil to dry out underneath an island like this. And it makes all the difference in the world. Just wanted to show you that before it got totally dark. And well, I'm only sweating a little bit. Stay cool out there. And until next time, may your thumbs always be green. What am I going to do with this yard? It's such a waste of space. But how am I going to turn the weeds and sand into anything useful for me?